games. From 100 to 1, he'll explain everyone. Action, trivia, fantasy, and more. Stay tuned to see what's in store. So you can play the game. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. Who's the star today? Because we're talking about his top 100 games of all time. We are now in the top 30, so we're expecting nothing less than the best. These are. I've noticed as we've gone through that you've picked some new games, but you also have some very old games. Are we going to be tending towards older games, or will we see a few new games scattered in these top 30? There's a bunch of everything. I'm an omni gamer. I like everything, and... There's a whole bunch of everything in this. I don't like everything, I, but there's some good games I you don't like, like. I like Conquest most Conquest of the Planet Earth is a good game. No, uh, Conquest of the Planet Earth, Just saying. not Doesn't a great like game. like everything. All right, here we go, number 30. My number 30 is Liar's Dice. I really, really, really like this game. No surprise, Jason actually runs the Liar's Dice Tournament at the World Board Gaming Championships. Yes, over 200 people all shaking their dice cups at once, slamming them to the table at once. It's excitement. My Board Game Geek username is Liar's Dice, so if you're That's looking for me... mostly because he's a liar, though. Mostly because I'm a liar. No, it's because I love this game. I love running it. When I played it years and years ago, I said, wow, this is one of the best bluffing games out there. Wait a minute. So your username is Liar's Dice, and it's only your number 30, though? There's games that are better than Liar's Dice. Ah. And being number 30 means that it's awesome. No, it's I meant, beyond but why'd awesome. Why did you pick it for your username, then, if it was only 30? Because I was the Liar's Dice GM when, at the time all right, all right, at, board, at WBC. So I said, okay, Liar's Dice in case people need to find me. Um, but I love it. I love the bluffing. I love... You know, sometimes you want to bid straight. Sometimes you want to say, ah, oh, I, I bid eight fours. And when it gets back around, the guy right before you bid like 13 fours. And you're like, no, I call you. Ha, ha, ha. I had a bunch of fives in my cup. And so there's times you want to lie and there's times you want to tell the truth because if you lie, you're going to get caught. And it's a really, really well done bluffing game. It's got very pokery kind of aspects to it. And I... Love it. It's awesome. All right. My number 29 is Britannia. It's wow. No, uh, Britannia, for those of you who don't know, is a, well, it should be a four-player game. Right? Only four. I only okay. play it in four. In which you go through the history of Britain from the invasion of the Romans up to, I don't remember, somewhere. The Normans. The Normans, Okay. And each person controls different factions. Like, one person controls the Romans, but as time goes by, you will control someone else. Yes. And then you'll control someone else, and you're trying to get the most points with your factions as the game goes by. Yes. Now, before you get into why you like it, I'm curious why you like it, because I think that it's a finely designed game, but it's really scripted more than any other game I've ever played. It is scripted. It is scripted. That's because it really... Uses so it history. follows history. It follows history. So, like, the Danes... Like, basically, there's different areas in Britain, and you have, you know, the Danes want to control these areas. The Welsh want to control these areas. When William the Conqueror comes on, William the Conqueror wants to control these areas. Obviously, the Romans just want to go pillage everything. And it really gives a historical feel. If you want to learn about the history of Britain and, how, and all the different invasions that happened over the years, this is the game to play. Um, there was an Avalon Hill version, and then there was a Fantasy Flight version as well. Um, Fantasy Flight did that when they did Fury of Dracula. They did that as one of their others, and they reprinted it. It is a wonderful, wonderful retelling of the birth of Britain, and it has similar aspects to games like History of the World and like Small World. I mean, yes, unlike Small World, which streamlined it, this one, you when you, do, when you move into a territory, instead of just... I put in three guys and I pop your guys. You have to actually roll dice and fight everyone. So it still had the dice aspect of fighting because it is an older game. But it is great. It's historical. And it is a great, I guess, conquering game where you're just moving out, you're conquering, you're moving through. And you have historical goals. So you're not just, 
you're not just coming in wherever you want to knock out a certain player. You really have to do historical goals where you might want to knock out a player, but you also have to, you know, I want to get to London or I want to get to um, a, up Two to Scotland. Two places on the board. Yes. yes. Right. And it's incredible. It's one of my favorite of that style game. All right. My number 28 is Power Grid. Okay, okay. Not a, another not surprise. I, I don't think I'll be surprised by many of them. Was Power Grid on... No, no. I you st he's still going to get probably nine of my top ten. I don't think I'll get nine, but I'm, I'm feeling good. Feeling um, good. Love it, love it, love it. Love expansion maps, love everything about it. It's great. I originally... Did you ever play the original version no, of it? No, here we go. The original one's better. No, I wasn't going to say the original one's better. The original one had crayons, and you actually had to, like, it was like Empire Builder. You had to literally take crayons and draw your routes. You didn't just... Funkenschlag. Funkenschlag, and you didn't... So I have the original, too. I have, obviously, all the versions, Power Grid, Deluxe, everything. And it's a great... It's just great. I mean, you... Different power plants are coming out. You have to decide if you want to upgrade your power plant. You have to, obviously, maintain it. And the... The unique aspect about this game is the or, the turn order because sometimes turn order goes from first to last and sometimes it goes from last to first. So from first to last for bidding, which hurts the player in first, but from last to first in getting resources, so it also hurts the player in first. So it really brings it where if you're in first, you have to do a lot more to keep that first place. While you're in last place, you're getting better benefits to be able to do things and build on the map. So I really like the balance in it. I really like everything about this game. Power Grid is just amazing. My number 27 is Castles of Burgundy. Okay, another Feld? Stefan Feld, he's great. A dice Feld? Uh, yes, uh, well, there's not that many dice in it. The dice are pretty critical. The, the dice, dice you roll, the you will dice use to are do different critical, actions. but your dice determine your actions in it and it's just it's just incredible i have all the expansions i have the extra boards because every Which none of them you need by the way you don't need any expansions to enjoy this game you don't you can play with the base but the expansions are cool because they have different boards they've added new rules for each different expansion of now there's a rule where you need to connect your dark greens first and you get points if you connect your dark greens and there's all sorts of little things that he's added twists along the way this is which is why I have it ranked higher than Alien Frontiers is because it is the best of the I roll dice and I use the dice to do an action. Whether it's taking pieces, playing pieces, or shipping. You basically have only three or four things you could do with, with each die, but each one's critical. You can manipulate your dice around to, do the, to grab the thing you want. You have to make sure you get the right things to build on your map. And Stefan Feld, in my opinion, is a genius. All right. My number 26 is Hannibal, Rome versus Carthage. I'm going to wait that one I may have written down. Oh, I did not. Good. <laughs> but I would have considered that one, actually. We've, we've been talking about a lot of point-to-point -point card-driven games. And this is the pinnacle of them. This was the second one ever to come out. We the People was actually first. But mm -hmm. Hannibal did it better. Hannibal is very balanced, very well done. I still like the fact that you don't use dice for combat, that you use the cards, you get a deck of cards, you, and then I play a card, you have to match my card. If you match it, you go. Essentially, you, you're trying to outflank your opponent. Yes, you're trying to outflank your opponent, but instead of just rolling a die, the card playing in the battles is kind of cool. It's kind of fun. It's cool. I'm not sure I like it in such a long game. But Hannibal's not that long. It plays in about three hours or so. <laughs> Compared to Paths of Glory that we talked about earlier, Hannibal's short. But it's yes, it's, yes. Compared to the longer game, it's short. It. I'm also short when compared to Wilt Chamberlain, but I'm still tall. Uh, but I'm short compared to you, and I consider you're short to everybody. Uh, well, that's your fun, pads anyway. of glory. I'm Hannibal. <laughs> if we talk about height, um, but it's just great. It's the best card-driven game out there. It really has a historical flavor of you know fighting to take Italy, and it is. Just a great game. I mean, if you like card-driven games, if you are want to learn about card-driven games, Hannibal is the one you should start with. 
Okay. We've now hit the top 25% of your list. Here we go. Yes. 25 down. And I'm going to go old school on this one. My number 25 is the Settlers of Catan. Wow. Yes. Wow. I, I am not going to call it Catan because I still call it Settlers. I don't know why Mayfair changed that. It kind of annoys me because people have called it Settlers for years. And I remember when this game came out. I remember getting this game. This was around the time that Magic had come out. This was like 94, the beginning of 95, somewhere in there. I was just finishing college. And... We were like, we got to play this game. Everyone was playing Avalon Hill games at the time, big, heavy Mayfair games at the time. And then this game came out, and it changed the face of gaming. It, Yes, some of the mechanics are outdated now, but... I don't think so. I mean, some people say, oh, it's an outdated game, but I don't think so. I think the game is still great. You have, obviously, you have a building aspect. You have a resource collection aspect. You have a trading aspect. You have the random die roll. The random die roll is the only part that is... Yes, it unbalances the game in ways, but I don't mind that at all. It's, I remember when it first came out, we would play it We would play it five times in a day. We'd be like, let's play again, let's play again, let's play again. It was, it's that good of a game, and that's why it sold, what, 25 million copies? As many copies as it sold is because it is that good of a game. It still holds its own to today. It is still wonderful. Every expansion version, every everything about this game, it's a game that if I was on a desert island, it's a game I'd want to be there with me on a desert island for sure because it is awesome. And Settlers rocks. All right. My number 24 is Hammer of the Scots. Oh, I thought you were about to say Carcassonne. Wow, we're starting to see it like a war game every other time now. Not every other time. Hammer of the Scots is a block war game. Yes, yes. Columbia Games, they did. They do block series. So block war games are similar to, I guess, Stratego, as you'd say. Right, because your blocks stand up and you can see the pieces on them. And sometimes in these games, you'll even have blocks with nothing on them that Ye you can use as decoys. Yes. Does Hannibal have that? Uh, um, you mean uh, Hammer of the Scots? Hammer of the Scots. No, it right. actually doesn't. Okay, but you still don't know what the pieces are necessarily. Yeah, you, so basically, I have troops, and Tom would have troops, and I all he sees is, like, the backs of the squares. You see the backs of the squares, and you're moving s similar to Stego, but Hammer of the Scots was the first of the Columbia games that added cards, and you use cards, and it's card-driven, and it's the first one to do card-driven movement, which, which is why it ranks above those older games like War of 1812 and games like that is because you have the card-driven part. So I use a card, and I either use the card for the action or I use the card for to move my piece. And it also has this really unique aspect where your pieces come back at the end of the turn, so you could venture out, but then you have to come back at the end of each year. And I love the hidden. I love the hidden movement. I love the hidden pieces. I also love the blocks where... You start with the power. As you take damage, you rotate the block so you can see what the top line is, how much strength you have. It's it's just a great game. It's widely considered to be the best block war game by many people. Yes. Uh, I think it's the best block war game. Um, Liberty is great as well. Liberty is obviously American uh, Wow, how is that war. obvious? Um, liberty, give me liberty or give me death. You know, it's other it's countries revolutionary also fought for war. Liberty, you realize this, right? Yes, but when you think <laughs> no, when you think liberty, okay, when I think when, guy when, here, oh. when I think liberty, I think like the Liberty Bell and everything. Liberty, you but, live in America. But yes, I think Hammer Scotts is still the definitive um, block game. All right. My number twenty three is the Mocker. Or, okay. as some people call it, Die Mocker. No one calls it that. <laughs> no, it's the Mocker. Um, this game is awesome. The It's a political game. You're doing elections, and it simulates an election as perfectly as you could simulate in an Germany, election. To be, to be clear, it's, these are elections in yes. Germany, which are very different than other countries. Yes, there's more than two parties, which is the way all elections should be. I wish it was like that in America here. I wish not. I don't understand these elections when I'm playing them. I... I played the Mocker, and it's a great game. But after, like, five plays, I'm, or, uh, I mean, 
I played it more than that, actually. But I mean, after <laughs> so many plays, I still don't know how this works exactly. I've learned a little bit more. But there's coalitions, and there's, there's a lot of yes, compromise, though. There is, there is. But that's the way government should be. It shouldn't either be black or white. There should be compromise. And the mocker really makes you feel like you are part of the election process. It makes you feel like you're really... Manipulating the voters to vote for what you want. Yes, it is. It's Everything about it's great. It's, it's one of those games where... If you can still find it, I don't think it's been reprinted for a while, but if you can find it, it's worth hunting down and finding and playing. It's a lengthier Euro game. Yeah, it's four hours, I'd say. You could probably knock it down to three if you're really good at it, but yeah, it's lengthy, but it is quite excellent. Yes, it's beyond excellent. It's awesome, which is why it's so high on my list. It's completely awesome. Best election game ever. d -Mocker. My number 22 is Antiquity. Okay, another splatter game. Yes, I love splatter. It's a longer one, right? Uh, it's yes, it's a, it's a longer game. It's probably like four hours, three three to four. Got a lot of long games on your list this week. Yeah, I don't mind long games. I don't mind if something really draws you in and and the game plays well. There's nothing wrong with playing a longer game. And Antiquity is great. You have you're building your. I guess you're doing like a Tetris style thing where you're building different buildings and building on your individual board your cities but you're also exploring on a map where you could get more cities get a little more little tetris boards but the really cool thing about antiquity and why i think it's so great is you could determine what victory conditions you want so not everyone's going for the exact same victory condition you you pick at the beginning of the game what victory condition you want you could change it along the way you could actually pay to change your victory condition along the way and you have all the aspects of every good euro you have you know limited resources that you're fighting for on the map you know am i going to fish and fish out the area am i and you're fighting for those limited resources you also have to worry there's pollution so you have to worry about your pollution level there's so many things in this game that make it amazing make it awesome definitely 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 when splatter reprints this i know every time it comes out they go instantly i have a feeling they'll they'll put whatever they're on version 5 5th edition or whatever they're on you should hunt it down it's you worth should not hunt it down unless you like long Complex Euro game. No, you should. It's worth the money. I know it goes for over $100 even when they have it in so stock. You're saying if people don't like long, complex Euro games, they should hunt it down. I think everyone should hunt this game down. That this is, is that craziness. Good. It's it's no, one I of the best you ever. Like it. That's fine, but not everybody should play this game. Okay, That's not everybody. Though. If you Come if on. you only like light games, if you like games, you know, if you like the light the light area like Ticket to Ride and King of Tokyo, this isn't the game for you. But if you like any game with any kind of meat on it, this is the epitome of games with meat. All right. My number 21, a game with a little less meat, is St. Petersburg. I really like this game. I like it too. You only like it because you are a character in it now. <laughs> no, I like St. Petersburg with two players a lot. Oh, you like it with two? I think St. Petersburg is best with two players. I think it's one of the best two-player games out there. Um, now, I do think the new version of it, when you add in the market, that doesn't work as well with two players as it does with yeah. four. And I think the new version is, with that market, really addressed a problem that the original game had, which I didn't like, was that Aristocrats was everything. Aristocrats is no yes, longer yes, everything. Yes, yes, the orange it's guys were the most important. Now. Orange guys were, well, they weren't necessary. I mean, I've won with the blue strategy without having Aristocrats. That's hard, though. It's harder, yes. But I don't think they're everything. But, yes, the Aristocrats were one of the most important things. You needed Aristocrats in order to do well. Now you can do a lot of the yellow, the new market cards, and do well. But the game is just great. It's a, you know, you have a limited amount of money. You're buying cards um, from a tableau. And when you buy them... You, they go into your specific hand, and you have to worry about getting more money to be able to play all your cards. You have to worry about getting victory points, and you have to worry about collecting the sets of the aristocrats. And in the market game, you have to worry about getting markets. But there's so many things that you have to worry about, and there's so many choices of, do I play a card? Do I take the card just to have it for later? Will I be able to build it? There's so many choices in this game. And it plays in, what, 45 minutes? It's it's great. I love playing it with the full complement. So everyone gets to start. And this is one of the things I really like is that the way you start the game, there's 
different pieces. So I like it in the full complement where everyone gets to start one of the rounds of, of what card they want to take. And so I like playing the new game in five or four if you don't use the market. And I like playing the original game of four. I guess it doesn't matter to me, though. I mean, if if there's an odd number of players... And one person gets to twice, start but twice. But it rotates. So it doesn't matter. And, and that was one of the cool, unique things is that the start of each of the picking things rotates along the way. Just wonderful game. St. Petersburg, love it. It's hard to imagine that there could be 20 games Jason likes more than these. But there is. And I'm still doing good. Still got nine. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder, though, if maybe a couple of these may not even be on your list at all. But we'll find out soon enough. Come back next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Vassell, and your host is... Jason Levine. Terrible taste of games.